Good morning. Here we are. Sorry about a little, little technical hiccup there. Good old Facebook changed how it did it at the last minute. Well, I'm not sure if it's Facebook or um, or Zoom, but anyway, there's a slight difference. But uh, and we were chatting, weren't we? To be fair. Yes, we were. <laughs> so good, <laughs> good morning, everyone. This is my lovely friend Sarah. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning. <laughs> now I've known poor Sarah for quite some years, haven't I? You have, yeah. <laughs> we used to work. <laughs> Don't say <it> like that. <laughs> we used to work together. We did have a bit of a giggle, didn't we? We did. It was a laugh, most definitely. <laughs> the, the, the most um, jovial uh, manager I've ever had. <laughs> That's because I was drunk the whole time. Light, <laughs> we did. We did have. Here we go. There's two of me. How can I not? Here we go. Look, always two of me. Oh. This drives me insane. However, I set my phone. We did. It was a laugh. How can I not do that? No. But I'm going to give up. I'm going to give up on that. So, anyways. Oh, look. Eva has no lipstick. Oh no, that was that was Farrah the week before. It's all going wrong. Never mind. We don't care if it goes. <laughs> <laughs> we don't care if it goes wrong, do we? We'll sort it out. So Sarah is talking to us today about reflexology, aren't you, Sarah? I am indeed, yes. Well, I said we'd, I said we'd giggle and we will, won't we? <laughs> <laughs> so Sarah, could you start with telling us a little bit about yourself? I'll just put myself on mute and try and sort my phone out for a mojo, all right? Okay, so uh, where can I start? Um, so I am a reflexologist and holistic therapist. Um, initially started my training as a reflexologist back in the day of 2000 and let me get this right 2006 um after i actually developed me from a viral infection which was bronchitis um and i just never seemed to get better from it um and eventually after sort of six months of going through a barrage of different tests nothing ever coming up it, I was then told that I had ME so wow. and back in those days it was definitely known as yuppie flu and yeah, it was, it yeah, was totally disbelieved and they thought it was all in your head and um, they would just supply you with a barrage of um, medication for depression and anxiety and hope that that worked but obviously it didn't and it still not doesn't. what it was <laughs> no, <laughs> because it was a depression so um and i think they know a lot more about me now um well they definitely know a lot more about me now so what, what actually is me so um it's called my it's short for myalgic encephalomyelitis so it's sort of an inflammation um and when you think encephalo it's sort of brain area but yeah they've realized it's actually um there's so much more to it really than anybody realizes there's so much information about it still but even now in gp with gps to totally misunderstood still but if you start to research um there's a doctor called dr sarah myhill um and she's got her own website and she um practices as a specialist in me um, you can't ever get to see her because she's just too busy. But um, yeah, so much information on there about how it affects the different areas of the body and the brain, um, the cells, you know, it sort of um, affects the energy in the cells and, mm. you know, how you get lactic acid build up really quickly, which is why you get fatigued so quickly. Oh, OK. I didn't um, realise that. Oh, it's so much to it, Claire. It's unbelievable. Yeah. And I'm, I'm still learning now, 20 Almost years like 50, on. Yeah. Yeah, so it's uh, yeah, a massive, massive battle for anyone that's ever actually experienced it. And now also quite relevant with COVID, that if you've mm. had COVID, they're talking about long COVID. Yes. And they're also talking about the correlation to that and being very similar. It is chronic fatigue. It is a form of ME. Um, and that's you know, something so, that, yeah, chronic fatigue syndrome has only just been recognised, hasn't it, as a you know an actual condition and not just people saying because like, it, it, it could be seen as a symptom of depression can't it i mean it is it yeah, is one of the yeah, things definitely. but it's when people don't want to you know 
that is pe people you know don't always see it as that and they like they say they think it's in your head and it's not it, it's just you you can't help it can you it's that's yeah. how it is isn't it yeah i mean don't get me wrong i mean there is um especially with the me thing that it's known it's proven now that it stems from a viral infection and oh, your right. body's inability to then recover from that um and you know along with mine it also i'm sure that's what upset everything in my system to the point now i've now got autoimmune dis dis disorders yeah. um although having said that i already had reynolds back in my 20s which is an autoimmune which i didn't know until recently oh um, is it we just mentioned that beforehand didn't we when we were chatting yeah so Gosh. yeah lots of different things that you didn't you don't realize are no. autoimmune conditions celiacs it's another one um you know so so many different things and once you've got one you start to develop others because obviously your body's attacking itself um so it's kind of i suppose my journey with reflexology because we digressed a little bit there um <laughs> then so the my recovery, like that, they? <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> to stem from my recovery of me or from me really um, and it's not a full recovery, but it's enough to get me back into work and um, living a life and having to sort of reevaluate the way that I live and what I do and how I do it. So, um, yeah, I suppose the training was um, over a course of a year, but it was only one weekend a month. So, um, and obviously you had to do 100 case studies and everything in that time. 100? So. Yeah, so it was uh, pretty heavy going and considering I'd still sort of on the path of recovery from reflexology, uh, from um, ME, it, you know, it was it was quite hard going mm. for me. But having said that, it also helped in a lot of ways because we were working on each other and we were getting the benefits of the treatments. So and a bit like a Reiki share, it was a reflexology yeah, share. Yeah, it was a reflexology share. So and, and it did, you know, really help me massively. Um, and I suppose I got into it because I was thinking, what can I do for a job now that's not stressful? What um, did you do before? Because obviously I know oh, what you did. Before that, I was working for Bernardo's and I'd been working for Bernardo's in uh, residential special schools for 13 years um, before I got ill. And um, well, it was probably about 12 years before I got ill. And then I'd obviously by the time I'd left, it had been 13 years. So very, very stressful job. Mm. Um, it was very rewarding as people say it was very rewarding and but also very stressful yeah. and um there was a um an expectation of you as a residential social worker or as a teaching assistant or anybody within the school to um always be there to always be ready for work to always you know just be there you know cover shifts if you needed to cover shifts and so it's, it was a very um, stressful, demanding role. Yeah. And when I got ill, I realised that actually, I don't think I'm ever going to be able to go back to do that. Well, I knew I wasn't going to be able to go back to do that. But um, along with that, I was living in tied accommodation to my um, job at the time. So when oh. I lost my job due to ill health, I then had to lose my house um and everything else that went along with it so you know it, it's just the stress of that equally wasn't great for <laughs> for my recovery but no and of course you, you you know you've got a daughter as well haven't you so that was yeah and she's you know, little then as well yeah yeah, yeah. so it was a stressful time for both but reflexology was a savior i have to say so um yeah so it kind of it's been there in my life now for since 2007 Wow. and um yeah and still hopefully going strong even though i've taken a time, bit of time out with covid and moving house and whatever you say yeah because um, sarah lived in maidstone but how long did you live there um lived actually in maidstone town centre for five years and then sort of on the outskirts and over in Walderslade for quite a few years before that and, um, and you've just relocated to the isle of wight yes i'm not jealous no. much <laughs> <laughs> and that was what six weeks ago wasn't it about six seven weeks ago yeah yeah and you're yeah. sitting there in your sunny kitchen and i'm like hmm, 15 <laughs> minutes from the beach hmm. <laughs> that's got to be therapy in itself so it as long as, yeah as long as reflexology i know you also um do a lot of reiki yeah i do angelic reiki yeah, yeah. and 
crystals and Sarah sent me a beautiful beautiful crystal if you saw the crystal on the in my on my page yesterday that I had a surprise in the post that was lovely Sarah that sent me that so a lovely smoky quartz to to help me with my my journey I'm on at the moment but uh, what else do you do as well you do all sorts of things don't you um acupressure facials which are lovely yeah Ooh. do that I also do massage, although I'm going to, I'm rethinking maybe not to do massage now because it is quite hard work, isn't it? It's hard work and my back isn't brilliant. And I'm just thinking I need to just stick with the things that aren't going to cause me stress to my body really. So in the process yeah. of revamping my, what services I do offer and, you know, and uh, so my website's not up and running at the moment because it's getting a little revamp so well you've, you've relocated and you're redoing your website aren't you so that you yeah. can uh, you yeah. know having a little, little change around now you're in the Isle of Wight and not in Maidstone how exciting so tell us what reflexology is because I do know a little bit because I've worked with you and um Sarah was involved in a really, her, Sarah, Nicola and Janine were involved in a really exciting project where we used to work where they set up a therapy room in the um the day service we used to work in uh for lots of learning disabilities so i found out a lot more about reflexology then because i'm not a fan of feet am i sarah <laughs> you are definitely not a fan of feet oh. <laughs> <laughs> i like the idea of reflexology i like the idea of doing it but i have to touch people's feet and i've only ever once had reflexology and i was like this <laughs> the whole way through because I was like how can you touch people's trotty old feet Sarah did once say to me if people have got bad feet they don't tend to come to a reflexologist which made me feel slightly better but I don't they're mind really bad, yeah they don't <laughs> they're too embarrassed to get their feet out so <laughs> well mine aren't too bad but I you know there, there's nothing wrong with them um yeah it's not like I've suddenly got pigs trotters or something but just that uh, you know it's not my it's not my thing so tell us about reflexology Tell us all about it and make me smile at the thought of you touching people's feet. <laughs> so where, where do we start? So should, maybe we should talk about the origins first. Of yeah, go for it. Yeah. And then we'll work our way up from there. So um, it is believed that sort of it stems from China okay. all the, back in sort of 5,000 years ago. Um, and, you know, if we look at reflexology and Chinese meridian therapy, they do go hand in hand together. Yes. Um, so I think that that belief there that it started in China um, or originated from China is, you know, there's a lot of evidence to that. So, but there's also evidence that it started back sort of um, in Egyptian times before Christ, 2,500 years before Christ. Um, and there's pictograms of um, evidence of this, of working on the feet. Um, in tombs and yeah. what have you so I think um, I shared I a picture think, of that didn't I yeah there's a tomb of an Egyptian doctor and it, there's pictograms on there of um, working on the feet so that's quite a massive thing isn't it and you know people that poo poo reflexology don't know what they're talking about really all these do they woo -woo, should, all these woo woo it, healing and actually yeah it's, it's been, been around for thousands of years medicine ever you know modern medicine was ever even thought about so Let's, uh, yeah, let's try and take a bit from that, really. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, it's still going, isn't it? Yeah. So then also there's, um, it's been used within sort of Cherokee, Cherokee Native American um, uh, lifestyles um, sort of for centuries, and they still use it now. Um, yeah. So you wouldn't, you wouldn't think that, would you? No, you wouldn't. At all. No. But there is, um, I don't know if she's still doing it. But there was a Cherokee called Jenny Wallace, which is almost a very English name, isn't it? Yes. But, <laughs> and she's from the Bear Clan. Yeah. And she is known as the Moon Maiden. I think you'll like that. It's a lovely I, I like, I'm it's writing Jenny Wallace Moon and the Maiden. Moon Maiden down. And I like the that sound name, of the Moon Maiden within the sort of Cherokees, means that it's a woman who, as a child, she was recognised as having real natural healing abilities. Wow. So they then call her the Moon Maiden, and they that is her role within the, within the oh, um, Cherokees, that, that she is chosen to develop her skills and abilities. Wow. So that's fascinating. And with that, they still use reflexology today. 
to I wonder have why everybody. it was because obviously they you know as much as we think oh we're so civilized in western culture blah 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 we weren't no not at all <laughs> <laughs> We were still hunter gathering. Do you know what I mean? When other people have built up civilization, <laughs> you, know I mean? you know. I mean, I know yeah. Stonehenge is, and that is like there. There's, you know, older than the pyramids, I believe. But I mean, you know, nobody built a pyramid here, did they? Perhaps the right aliens didn't land. I don't know. But I wonder why. <laughs> We've got. Is it because they were very earth-based, like the, you know, like the the indigenous American, Native American, you know, people were so remote and in a different place and why the egyptians and well, yeah, i suppose if they didn't really get access to the things that we had access to did they and the things weren't developing in the same way it was all very natural approach to everything yeah. you know natural developed, medicines yeah they developed yeah. all these things and their understandings while we were still really were developing ourselves it's funny how it's it kind of then went the other way and i think it's all just it's all just decimated now to be honest but it's <laughs> <laughs> let's not go there on that one we no, could let's, not go there. <laughs> let's not go to covid but it's interesting how these you know what were really advanced medicines developed didn't develop here unless there were some here that we've just forgotten or didn't know perhaps they got wiped out that's the other thing it's hard to know things it? down, it's hard we? to know yeah, uh, we, I mean, if we look look back at you know herbal medicine, it's been around for years. Well, yeah, herbal medicine has got to have been used back in the days five thousand years ago, hasn't it? Oh, absolutely, in China. that's all there was, and yeah. it would have been here and before. Yeah, but we we had no tradition of writing it down, so I I wonder if that means it was here, but we just didn't know about it. Yeah, we because just didn't obviously, document it, did we? Really? Yeah, yeah, we didn't have caves yeah. to write it to write it down on, like some places, and we didn't have papyrus, and we we've lost our. We had an oral culture of singing, didn't we? Like the druids and the bards, and the, so I've yeah. wandered off already. We knew this would happen. We wandered. <laughs> <don't> we? <laughs> <laughs> sorry back to the origins of, of um break, you know. back to the origins of reflexology sorry sarah so zooming forward to sort of 14th century um in europe so coming into sort of western culture um there was harry bond bressler who um came up with zone therapy which uh, then developed a little bit later on but zone therapy then um, was linked to it's about the nerves within zones of the body that then go to organs and areas okay. of the body and by stimulating those, those areas those zones is stimulating the nerves I mean there are thousands of nerve endings in the feet more than anywhere else in the body so um, that's why reflexology works mostly through the feet but also through the hands the ears the face but it is predominantly it's through the feet so and how do we know that how did people find mean? that out sarah sorry to what about the nerves yeah oh i'm not i'm not a doctor <laughs> <laughs> but, but i think how... through their research they've realized by touching certain areas in the feet and when you, we talked about we talk about zone therapy there's five zones that they split your feet into um and i believe i'll get it right zone one is from your big toe yeah. running up the middle of your body zone two is from your second toe running up sort of just running up the body where it runs from the feet yeah and as it goes up and then obviously zone five is your little toe running up the side of the body yeah. um so they realize but stimulating the areas of the feet there in those zones affected whatever was going on in the body in those areas in those zones so if that makes sense Funny. yeah very yeah. Strong. my friend jenny said she's just tuned in to hear about reflexology but also to see my reflection my reaction to feet <laughs> we need she's to talk a... more about feet just to get no the we don't going. <laughs> no we don't <laughs> she's wicked so each toe has got a zone of its own in zone therapy yeah each toe has got its own zone so and we always look at the body as a whole um, so if you were to put your feet together, your two big toes together, that would be zone one going up through the right, middle okay. of your body. And then zone two comes up. Oh, okay. So like vertical. Three, literally looking at it as zones, looking at the body as a whole and then looking at the zones. So Okay. Oh, that's I'm hoping I've got that right and it's not the other way around, but I'm sure I have got it right. Um, yes. 
<clears throat> yeah, so uh, zone therapy back in the 14th century, and then that, you know, the Russians and the Germans were also dabbling there in the world of reflexology, doing their own sort of research and finding their own bits there, but I don't really know a massive amount about that, so I'm not going to touch on that. Yeah. Oh, um, wow. And then it went to the 1800s, late 1800s, sort of early 1900s, Dr. William Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald. So um he is American. Yeah. Um and but he did a lot of work in America and in England, predominantly London. So um and he realized that um he also he he's the sort of known person for zone therapy. Bresler isn't really unless you go right back in history, if you talked about who, you know, who developed zone therapy, they would say Dr. William Fitzgerald. Yeah. So, um, and he then developed further on that and realised that um, by using certain points in the hands, you could, um, you could find, you've got a bit of an echo thing going on, haven't you? You could find, um, you could almost, by applying pressure to places in the hands, it would use it as an anaesthetic effect. Um, so okay. he would like put bands around areas of the fingers related to the zones and then they could then do operations with these bands on without having to give you an anaesthetic. Can you imagine that? I'd be too scared, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'm sure it works. It's the same as acupuncture, isn't it? You can have acupuncture and not have any anaesthetic. Still not selling it to you, Claire? No, Not I yet. think I th I've got to go and have another <laughs> operation and I think I won't be saying to them, if you don't worry about the anaesthetic, just tie an elastic band. Look, I've got a handy elastic band. We'll just tie that round that finger and I'm good to go. <laughs> no. <laughs> you could try it another time though, couldn't you? Band it in an area of one of the fingers or the thumb and just see if it helps with a headache or something. We could try that. Well, the, the, the other color. thing I know you famously is for migraine is the pegs. Yes, and that, they work. That, 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 that works. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely, yeah, that works definitely. Large intestine for hey goo. Yeah, that definitely works. Oh, yeah. but you could have told me about the large intestine before. <laughs> <laughs> what can you do for colon, Sarah? <laughs> oh God, don't. <laughs> I've okay. definitely managed to clear um, constipation many, many a time. <laughs> tell you what we did a needed diner rod for me but then... <laughs> oh dear so he found the connection to the hands as well William he found Fitzgerald. the connection yeah so he's developed that a little bit further and he had someone working for him and his name has slipped my mind but from there the mother of modern reflexology um uh -huh. Eunice Ingham who yes. was sort of late 1800s going up to 1974 she passed away cool so she's done, she did really well, didn't she? Obviously, all mm. that reflexology kept her young. It did, um, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. So um, she evolved the actual foot map for reflexology. Oh, right. Okay. So, um, because she did her own research and realised, actually, if you press this point, that relates to that part of the body, that organ. So um, that's basically how the map was developed. And from there, there are plenty of foot maps, as we all know. Some of the points are in a different place to somebody else's map. However, we just have to go with it works. It definitely mm. works. And if you, you know, I've, the way I learned, um, there was a lot of link there with sort of Chinese meridian with the, the meridians. So I remember you talking about those to me when we were still at um, Reginald Road. Yeah, years so ago, you were saying about the meridians then, yeah. Yeah, incorporating that into reflexology, which is what the Chinese would have done, wouldn't they? So I would still do. Yeah, so, so interesting that the foot map is so recent. There's no ancient Eastern maps? Not that I know of. I mean, there could be. I mean, the well, Chinese the must have know. had them back in the day, mustn't they? But you know, Unless they remembered them. Unless they were just and they taught just them remembered and remembered and it them. Wasn't, yeah, it wasn't documented. Oh. So, um, and then we are talking about sort of Western as well, aren't we? So Western medicine, 
So Eunice was the one that brought the foot map into work, unless I've got this wrong. And if anyone knows better than I do, and I have got this wrong, please tell me, because I'll be really interested. So <laughs> I would have thought you know your stuff. Is I know you, and I know you know your stuff, especially after all this time doing it. I wonder if that's a um, reflective of how we learn in the West compared to elsewhere. And I don't mean that to be a stereotype, but if we are more visual and need to know now, than having yeah. a right today we're going to work on this toe for the next two three weeks and people are but get on and do it whereas we have a different learning scheme because we haven't had that tradition of memory no yeah Ooh. i think we do learn completely differently and and you know i think a lot of it back um well imagine with the cherokees that's very much a hands-on healing definitely going with what you feel you know, there, I'm sure there wasn't any documented books or anything that, that, that they learn from. It literally sure. is, you know, very much about intuition and reading the body and looking at different what's going on with the body and, you know, knowing that you yeah. can touch areas of the feet or the hands, the head, wherever. And, and once yeah. you've been told and finding, I remember you saying about the hands and the crunchy areas. Yeah. Like and once you know there, that, you can yeah. find those crunchy areas. And so once you know a small thing, you can build from your intuition and, and what yeah. you. I mean, yeah. you can teach yeah, you can teach yourself reflexology, and there is so much out there now. You know, YouTube's amazing for learning things, and there are some really good, there are also some really rubbish. Don't go with everything. But if you try to stick with the people that like come from association of reflexologists or other groups like that, where you know you've had proper training and you know someone's teaching you a little bit about how to self-manage things with reflexology yeah. there's plenty on you on youtube that can help you know and, not the people uh, that picked up a book yesterday i think they know no, today yeah definitely worth a look you know and and give it a little read first about who this person is and you know if they're qualified reflexologist and they're registered with a, a good governing body or what you know whoever then that's great so yeah. um and also same with um sort of acupressure acupressure is amazing that goes along with a lot of what i do as well you know working so on what's acupressure because i've got acupuncture in my head so i know you don't play with same things. thing so you're working the same points you're probably working less points than you would in acupuncture um right. but you're you're working the main points and um because of the way that i was taught reflexology we're working on the meridians as well as the reflexes so um and i'm still trying to develop that now it's such hard work to try and remember everything but obviously as time goes on it's all tries sort of sinks in a little bit more yeah um you know with the menopause it doesn't help claire because my memory is terrible but <laughs> <laughs> i'm going to look forward I to just go with, i go with my favorites and things that i know that really do work and then i sort of develop from there really that's fair like you're never not you're always learning aren't you always learning always so, yeah yeah definitely. Um, there's definitely there's um if you look up on like, youtube holden jigong center um a guy on there absolutely lovely and he does so many videos on there and there's a great one it's called 60 second acupuncture uh, acupressure self massage so 60 second acupressure wow. self massage holden jigong center on youtube just have a look at that the guy is lovely and he does video after video after video of using different acupressure points and jigong exercises just to really lift you and get the energy flowing through your meridians how are we spelling holden jigong holden holden h-o-l-d-e-n yep jigong so q-i-g-o-n-g -G -G, and then center okay Thank Lo you. Really lovely guy. I've signed up to his um, emails and everything, so I get stuff through all the time. But really okay. interesting. Does a lot of like free bits and pieces. So, oh, okay. But that's really, that's really always good nice one. to know, isn't it? Because yeah. you, you know, you can have a look and think, especially if you're interested in training in it or learning a lot more before you go and pay a lot of money to learn. Because these things aren't cheap to learn. Because oh you, god, you're no, not at all. You're paying for someone's time and expertise and then yeah. so you can go and have a little look and see how, if you think you're going to like it if you think it's for you before you spend all that money yeah definitely yeah, yeah. And also just if you don't want to learn it and you just want to keep yourself you know keep the energy flowing through yeah. your body nicely 
you know, you're feeling a bit stagnant at times, of which we all do, don't we? Yeah, you know, definitely. There's, there's real good techniques on there just to get the energy flowing, you know, a little tapping of the back of the spine and, you know, things like that. You don't realise and then you do it and then afterwards you think, oh, you can literally feel really? the energy moving up your spine. Yeah, and it's just about getting that right flow with your yin and your yang and whatever you say. Oh, I'm going to go and have a look at that. I would have a look at it because, it, you know, there's definitely stuff on there that can help okay he sounds fascinating he is he's lovely as well so i've kind of got a bit of a crush on him so i watch it all the time <laughs> i'm off to have a look now <laughs> no one till mark <laughs> so when you do reflexology what do you do so obviously you sterilize people's feet in bleach before you <laughs> <laughs> we actually don't if if before covid it's better not to clean the feet which I know sounds horrendous. If you've got someone coming in with black feet, you're going to clean those feet. You're going to soak them. You're going to do whatever. Oh. But as a reflexologist, it's all sort of a natural, Claire, you just stop, stop being so squeamish. It's very much a natural thing because you, you need to, um, this is going to make you cringe. Are you ready? You need to almost get a smell of the feet oh. <laughs> to see if there's, if you can sort of pinpoint any imbalances or see if there's anything going on. Also, it's a good idea to look at the feet first before you clean them because you can look at different textures and tones. As soon as you start cleaning the feet, you're making the area sort of smooth out in a lot of places because you're almost like massaging it by cleaning it, aren't you? So, but, so if you look at the feet first and give them a little inspection, you can see different colours, different textures and tones and pick up little smells. Look at the face. I'm loving it. <laughs> think i've been sick in my mouth <laughs> and then just go yeah where's the bucket and then we <laughs> and then you can really sort of get a good picture of what's going on for somebody really so if you've got yellow in you know there's some real stagnancy going on and almost you can there might be a bit of infection so uh, you know underneath the toes in that padded area of your foot you know is that yellow is it speckly you know what is it what's going on there you can tell a lot by color um what if there is any imbalances so it's always a great thing to do before you clean the paint so once you, you clean okay? the paint shall i go on <laughs> and breathe do you need a moment <laughs> <laughs> let's let's move on from that quickly oh, so <laughs> my, my stomach has just gone <laughs> actually i've actually got a chart here i'm hoping you might be able to see it so ta-da uh -huh, yes so if you don't get look, green feet though surely they're very green yeah then it's <laughs> never a good look unless you've been running around in the grass oh that's uh, true <laughs> so you can see on there that the different areas of the feet oh yeah so you've got you know your big toes are your brain basically your head yeah and then the two toes then go from there are related to eyes and then to ears so you can see and also sinuses and everything so everything that's going on in the head yeah so um and then you've got your lungs which you can see yeah and then all the other areas i don't know hopefully that's clear enough for that me. is very clear yeah yeah so it's, it, yeah that's really interesting so this is the chart that i learned from and this um is inga dugans which is um an af a lady from africa south africa oh okay um yeah so her teaching is really good because it comes with this whole chart and with all the different meridians and everything so it's really useful are the colors the meridians so there? the colors are uh i think that's just to show you different areas it's, just, it's just to make it clear just to make it clear okay, yeah so you've got a lot going on there and then obviously the side and the tops of the feet if i just give you a quick look at that so you've got there oh okay the other oh, areas wow. the hips and you know fallopian tubes etc and the um all the different areas you can see the spine mm. at the bottom we see the spine oh and the, and the sex and organs as well on the top you've got oh, your God. breast area wow i didn't realize that it was um on the top of the feet as well i thought it was just the base of the feet yeah no it's all on the top okay Oh, how yeah, fascinating. It's, yeah, it's very fascinating, isn't mm, it? Yeah. yeah, and there's so much more to it as well. So 
Um, so yeah, so you just start, I would start with a you know, reflexology treatment just by sort of make sure, giving the feet a little inspection, just sort of see if what's going on there and um, do if anything I can pick up. Temperature also, if you've got any cold areas, that's also a good bit to look at. And then you can link that to um, the Chinese areas as well, sort of, it's all very complex. I don't want to confuse people too much. So I'll try and stick to the reflexology. Um, <laughs> but there's, there's bits that sort of combine that somebody who's yeah, an experienced there's a, there's practitioner like yourself will be able to think, yeah. ooh. So if I was to come to you and say, um, I've got a problem with my uh, kidneys, would you be able to see that in my feet? We'd be, I think we, sh we should be, uh, there's, no, there's no guarantees, Claire, because everybody's different, you know, you need to go on, you know, some people have nerve damage in their feet, some people yeah. aren't as sensitive in their feet, you know, um, but ordinarily, yes, you can tell, you so can tell. I could touch your kidney reflex and, or I could look at your kidney reflex and it might be really puffy, or right. it might be really sunken, so which would say that, you know, you're either, it's not you're not getting rid of fluid properly or you're dehydrated or you know that sort of stuff or I could touch it and it might be really sensitive okay. or then again I could touch it and you might have any feeling in it whatsoever which means it's you know maybe it, there's a real depletion there yeah and we would need to work it so you go on what you can see what you can feel and also obviously you always take a full um, medical history and consultation with your client so that you have a good idea of what's going on because if it's the kidney it's not just the kidney no it's, more it's always it. the bigger picture yeah. it's always what's going on with the body somewhere everything that it affects will be yeah and also the emotional link which is a massive one and we always you know sometimes we forget about the emotional link to um health when mm. the two go hand in hand together as we well know yeah. um you know and if you're, you're looking at grief and things like that, you can pick that up in the feet. You can pick up if someone's grieving by looking at the lung area. Really? Uh, you'd have a good idea about it. You'd sort of tie it in eventually. You know, some people aren't always good at telling you everything the first or, time. Or I suppose they think that it's not relevant, that, yeah, they've yeah. got, um, you know, lung problems. But, you know, yes, somebody died six months ago, so it's not completely current. But of course, six months in the grieving process is absolutely it's nothing. Enough, as yeah, as absolutely as nothing. Both know, you know, but if it was last year, yeah, well, you know, so and so died last year or the year before. Grief can take years to, to fully come out. Oh, of course it? it can. Yeah, of course it can. Yeah. So, Definitely. so if so, somebody comes to you, would you look at? Do you do you take on? Obviously, you. Do, I know. You, I know you do a really thorough medical thing you know questionnaire before to see what's going on what what people's issues are whether they've got different conditions because obviously that was going to affect how you treat that person yeah so, so supposing i've come to you and i said yeah i've got kidney problems see you later my drunken <laughs> brother trucker is going home uh, <laughs> we had the trucker and the brother trucker drunk last night which oh was good quite grief that was good <laughs> it was i filmed them and it was like derek and clive believe me it was do you remember derek and clive <laughs> with language to match it was it was super deep oh dear lord <laughs> yeah. gosh yeah it was um put it this way my husband will never make a nurse the way he was trying to pull his brother's shoes off because paul's like, i can't get more like, oh god <laughs> i've come to you and i've said right okay here's my medical history so i've got um hypertension, I suffer from migraines uh, and I'm having trouble with, I get lots of kidney infections, lots of urine infections and kidney infections. So you take, you know, all of that. So how would you, how would you, would you work on my feet to, how would, what would you do then? Or, or if I came to you and said, I, I just fancy a treatment, what's, what's well, the difference those two got, scenarios? I mean, if you've got specific treat, uh, specific issues, you know, health issues that you want to yeah. work on, then we would look at, we would always, I would always just do a full treatment anyway, because Checking. that in itself is working everything. That is just helping the body to release its toxins okay. and any buildups, helping to rebalance everything. And that in itself is enough. You know, we do, I personally wouldn't go in full guns blazing, trying to work those specific areas and just those oh, areas because it's not it's not going to give you a whole treatment it's not holistic it's not you know and we don't know why there's imbalances in those areas and what's causing that we need to look at it eventually over time 
just seeing how you react to your first treatment and what mm. comes up after that it might be one area balances out and another area gets worse so then we'd start to look at those different things and think okay how can I link that to the different meridians the different areas the systems of what's going on um so it's very complex mm. it's not always easy to explain yeah. to people and it's kind of one of those things that you do I'm not the greatest person at explaining things like when I did my MVQ I really struggled with explaining breaking down little by little the little things that I do because I just do it yeah. I just know how to do and, it yeah <laughs> and it, <laughs> no but I understand what you're saying that you sort of you know like and I use those as examples because I know how you work but like you say you don't go in all gone right let's work on these kidneys it's a case of right let's do an MOT and see what's going on and see what yeah. that shows me so that you know which areas you're, you're expecting to find a difference in whether that's a sensitivity or a numbness and then other interesting things that you know are going to be like okay so actually it's showing me that your you know other things are coming up which are going to be related so that is yeah. how you would work isn't it I think yeah. and also you have to be very cautious and conscious about what you're doing as well because um you don't want to overwork in an area that's already overworking yeah. you see what I mean you don't want to force it to work harder because it's already trying to work hard so you need to get other parts of this, the body and the system to do their job a little bit better yeah and to encourage like a slow movement rather than going full in on one area and thinking yeah this will sort it out because it's not it's not going to it's not it gonna, out. it's, it's not it is it, the whole it will do something but it's not necessarily going to help you you know it could mean that you get a bit of a, an extra crisis healing crisis or don't call it crisis but healing response yeah yeah afterwards because you've worked an area too much so I always like to be just a full reflexology treatment first time round um and noting everything that I can pick up because I always like to give like really detailed notes of what I found and where and you know and then afterwards you know my that doesn't just end for me I'm then looking at my notes once my client's gotten away and looking at okay well what can I link this to get my charts out you know have a look at what's the bigger picture here and then when they come back next time you start to work on those areas that you think need more attention really but I still always give a full treatment again because I think it's such a holistic approach to it all that yeah. you need to work the whole body and not just one area just, just so, to bring it all back into balance really yeah so people are getting it's you know it's more than just the treatment on the day it's uh that's effectively like a consultation and a, a treatment but then you will go and look and go right well okay so that's suggesting this to me that's suggesting that let's put this together so when they come back next time I know perhaps we'll do a little bit more on this perhaps we'll see how that is doing so yeah. it's, it really is considered and yeah and, and you know it's very much a case of you working together on this because yeah. you both need to be proactive you you know the person that's coming to you needs to be proactive about their health so if you're giving them a bit of guidance about you know maybe it's a good idea that you sort of increase your water intake and you you know don't have this for a period of time and maybe try this and you know and just giving that little bit of advice about how they can help themselves at home I'll also give like hand techniques to sort of help while they're at home if there's specific areas or just little areas on the foot that they could reach themselves if they were able and just yeah. do a little bit of just simulation to in between yeah. time yeah just to keep it going because sometimes you need a little bit more than just that one treatment you oh know, yeah of the, course so in I mean, between you... treatments so you just kind of <laughs> like to have something to do at home to carry and it through it, it keeps it going so i know we were talking about the hand treatments before and we did a little work on that didn't we yeah we did yeah. so there's me saying about the crunchy bits but you really could feel the crunchy bits can you <laughs> yeah so what is that is that the build-up of um the acid do you remember? is that right is that oh god do you know what i can't even think right now my brain's frazzling um but it's it's like a build-up yeah it's like a crystallization you get it in massage as well so if you have a massage and someone's massaging you you feel all those crunchy bits and you're like oh and you you laying there having the massage uric like, acid oh, isn't it god, it's like uric acid build up yeah, yeah so you're you kind of just want to where the muscles get like stagnant or tight and everything you just want to work it out don't you so mm. but for us as reflexologists it's quite a good way of feeling you know tenderness I mean if you do your own hands you can feel the tenderness can't you but yeah 
but when yeah. I'm working on people's feet if I can feel that crunchiness then I know that that's an area that I definitely need to be working on just to try and break it down a bit the same as I would in massage so yeah yeah it's um there's lots of little pointers there's not just sort of one or two there's lots of different things that you need to go so with like to you give you a bigger picture we, we keep, I was going to say, we keep referring to the, you know, the term holistic, which is an overview. It's, it's everything, isn't it? It's not everything, just like, yeah. it's the kidney. It's like, so what's, what's feeding these problems? What's easing these problems? What, what is working alongside it? What isn't working alongside it? It's all of those things. So I can, I mean, I can show you a chart here. I'll quickly show you. I mean, this is how in depth it is from the thing that I've learned. So for instance, this is the lung meridian and the large intestine. So they go together. Okay. The lung so, and the large intestine. Can you see you've got internal branch disorders and then the meridian, meridian disorders. Can you see at the top it tells you? So yes. the internal branch dis disorders are the ones that develop further and further as you've got more issues going on in that meridian. But you can see, I mean, some of the charts are massive, like the stomach and spleen, the, the, the amount of symptoms that you can get come up for those meridians yeah so if you can sorry, I'll zoom in a bit can you yeah. read that I can yeah that's interesting so there's all that really is interesting yeah yeah like all different things you can see the meridian that shows you in the lines going up it tells you where it travels to that that is really really interesting I'll tell you for why because that is exactly where the, the treatment I'm having at the moment that is exactly where they're expecting me to have additional things Issues yeah. come up yeah. yeah so all of those areas are what you can possibly expect to have an yeah. imbalance in yeah yeah and that is actually true so far as 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 i'm going through with this and uh that is that is so so amazing i'll have to so then you can't tell me nobody can tell me that meridians aren't real and it's all just a load of poo poo because it's, it's really this not is, <laughs> and i've not seen that before but as i'm looking at i'm thinking that is exactly what has happened it's exactly the areas in my body that are being affected right now by by the stuff that's going on when it's just it's all good everybody it's all good so no, nobody think oh god but that is exactly the areas and that is western science go to the hospital science tying in with that and you didn't you didn't know that that yeah, was going to be go. yeah. <laughs> finally amazing. they're learning Claire finally they're learning <laughs> <laughs> yay <laughs> so <laughs> as for benefits of reflexology what what can you I mean obviously you can't you can't cure a cancer you can't cure a heart attack um you know and you all that sort of thing you can you what can you do to help those things? what can you, reflexology help people with um obviously everything is within a, you know within certain perimeters everything medical science is is in certain perimeters so what what can reflexology do to help various conditions and things okay so there are many 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 conditions obviously stress and anxiety is a big one yes. blood pressure is a big one but then doesn't that go along with stress and anxiety yep um yeah i mean when i was training back in the day um a lot of my case studies were older people who had high i, I had about four or five of them had high blood pressure along with other s symptoms of other issues like arthritis and what have you um but i think the three that i was working on at the time a male a man and two women and they were all friends so that's how i managed to get them all so um and about. they all had <laughs> high blood pressure and two of them had arthritis and um two out of three of them actually had to have their blood pressure medication reduced after really? having a yeah uh, after having three four treatments wow yeah because it had got to that it was naturally lowering the blood pressure which it is great for and it was um, bringing the body back into balance because obviously when our body gets out of balance it then becomes it has more pressure on it so you know it's like i don't know i don't know where you stop with it really but there are so many conditions obviously me ms that's another one it can really help with trying to sort of just with the nerve stimulation obviously we know mm -hmm. with ms there's that break and the sepsis isn't there that, you, you, that it's not there but yeah when i worked in the hospice um, and a lady in there with MS and 
she absolutely loved reflexology just because of the way it made her body feel it wasn't repairing her but it did give her it just that little bit of just even Lift. for a short time of feeling better yeah, yeah feeling a little bit better wow and reducing the symptoms a little bit so there's so many things that it, it's useful for got you know um hormonal issues definitely is a lot of stuff you can do there working on back you know rebalancing the periods and everything and oh um, wow um, yeah and yeah you know and yeah, working menopause sort of just helping bring things back in balance because we know we can work on the whole endocrine system so bringing it all back into balance and you can spend quite a lot of time so what you do depending on what you've got with somebody coming in if you've got somebody who's going through menopause or someone who's got really difficult periods you would spend a lot of time within that treatment just balancing whatever's going on within the endocrine system so you know what's the endocrine system so your endocrine system is your, like your hypothalamus your pituitary going down to your thymus your thyroid um down into your brain work now hang on um adrenals which is above your kidneys which is stress yeah. related isn't it so and then you've got that's the fine tuning um, isn't it yeah so all the hormonal and the ovaries within that as well so they're all on the same system the endocrine system and once that gets out of balance you have a multitude of things that can go wrong as we know um so yeah Definitely. it's kind of you can really do some great work on that and also with fertility as well oh okay oh wow yeah so, so that's it is it is really wide reaching and um yeah definitely, yeah. definitely. and you, you like you said before you can do little treatments on yourself you can do little treatments on yourself yeah you can do definite hand treatments on yourself even if simple things like we've talked about before um on your hands if you've got a cough a cold anything like that especially if you've got a cold you're bunged up you've got sinus issues yeah you know a great one to do is to work your fingers and you do like a see if I can get a little caterpillar. caterpillar motion up like this you get to the knuckle and you rotate because you don't want to press hard on that and then you go up again and then oh. you start at the bottom so you would do it from the side going up the middle and then the side again and then you could do it the other side so you're literally doing the caterpillar motion and if you've got any sinus issues or anything like that or ear or eye issues you will feel it because there'll be tender spots in your fingers really so, yeah and if you keep working them it's great because no one needs to know what you're doing you can you quite can happily sit with your hands in your lap and then work up your fingers constantly while you're sitting there and you'll start to notice oh my nose is running all or fingers to feel all fingers yeah not necessarily thumbs although thumbs are great for like just relieving head um so you could work down your fingers and then also feed into um my brain's going hang on what where am i going with this <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I know this is I, an I know, me thing <laughs> yeah. i know before and we've said with the the um the migraine which is a, a really common one it's this bit here isn't it is to it's on the outside yeah the so outside v, yeah so that in the v is there your large intestine four is also known as hagu uh or i don't know hagu hagu um Hang on, I'll sit so you've got your v here yeah and down the bottom of that v where it meets the bone yeah you'll have a tender spot if you go in along the bone yeah and you're pressing there if you've got a headache or you can press in anywhere along there actually let me see if i can show it to you along yeah. this bit so you've got a meridian running you can see that yeah you, and also a large like vein or artery or whatever it is so if you press in there you'll feel it's uncomfortable if you've got the right spot so you'll know and so you can press in there and rotate while you're in there which is quite uncomfortable if you're doing it or you can just press and hold so if you've got a really bad head that will not go and you just need a bit of relief from it you can press in there and it will go so long as you're pressing in you'll hold it and press in and this pain will release and you'll feel it and you'll think oh thank god for that and then but if you when you let go again always let go slowly when you get low let go again you'll probably feel the head come back but you can keep working that area press hold 
and rotate on it. And that's one of the things that he tells you in Holden, Jigong. Oh, yeah. He tells yeah. you how to do that as well. So press, hold and rotate. And you can keep doing it on both hands. And it will help relief, relieve that headache. Wow, that's amazing. And because I, I I know I can't remember what magazine I read it in, but if you put a um if you put a peg on there, that will yeah. help. Yeah, they do say you can put a peg on there, yeah. Temporary relief from a migraine. That's right, yeah. Wow. And it says a lot of other things as well. So it does a lot of the head, so like toothache, jaw ache, you know, oh, really? Spite and yeah, anything sort of head wise. And also, funnily enough, clearing your um intestines and having a good clear out. Oh, okay. That's well, all linked. It's all linked. <laughs> I'm going to go and buy myself and a whole set of so pigs. You get the old man to do that one. It's good for a hangover. <laughs> what, is it on there? Yeah. Is that good for hangover? Oh, yeah. Large intestine. Well, I, board, yeah. I haven't had a hangover for a very long time because I haven't had a beverage for a very long time. But <laughs> <laughs> I should look forward to uh, summer when I can. So. so it's also good for, yeah, good for pain. It's called the Great Eliminator. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I didn't know it was good for that. I might not turn. I might let him suffer. What do you think? <laughs> yeah it's worth yeah. Evil, it's much funnier evil. isn't it <laughs> i mean what what have you got to video if you make him better <laughs> i will I just say though avoid that in pregnancy as you should in you know if you are pregnant don't go all guns blazing trying to do yourself reflexology because no what you, are your contraindications you know, for reflexology that was something i was going to ask as well there are a few pregnancy is one of them especially in the first trimester um you don't but a lot of that is it's good for you if you if you're with someone who knows what they're doing and they're not yeah. going to press any areas because you don't want to cause you don't want to cause any yeah no um because obviously you're making the body work better and some of the things that you do can have a downing effect so that they'll push that like they'll make the body push down and you don't want to do that we don't want anything pushing down no. during pregnancy so, not, know, not until that ninth month not until that ninth month hey, hey, go for it yeah. <laughs> Have you ever done um, sort of reflexology to get a baby going? I've helped, yeah, I've helped one or two wow. people. It's uh, when they've got to that, and they're like, "I need a curry, I need a curry," and um, you know, <laughs> they're, they're desperately trying anything, won't they? Yeah. <laughs> it's three weeks overdue. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are any but, other like, contraindications? Sarah? Um, blood clots, really. If you've someone's okay. got a blood clot, history of blood clots, you need to be careful there. You need to. Um, I'm not saying you can't ever work with anyone that's no. had blood clots, but you need to know that it's cleared because obviously yeah. we're stimulating the circulation. Um, and we don't, we're getting the blood to flow through the body properly as it should be. Um, we don't want to be moving any clots. So you do no. need to be careful yeah. on that one. And so that's why people need to be honest as well when they come to you and say, oh, actually, yeah, you know, I think I might be pregnant or, you know, I have had this and I have had that because obviously, and you know, you know to keep them safe yeah yeah yeah, oh, yeah. and obviously you wouldn't work on someone that's just had a break somewhere in the body because obviously there's that risk of possible clots and I was gonna say creating a clot so as well. you do yeah. need to be careful there you wouldn't necessarily work on anyone's feet if they've got something that is um that you can catch if they've got some sort of fungal infection or anything like that. Ooh, you stop. You <laughs> saved that to <laughs> last. Be careful didn't... with your verrucas. Put a little plaster over it before you start working it. <laughs> you saved but it to the end, didn't you? Know, you you sat there going, be... "I'm going to wait till <laughs> make Claire vomit." <laughs> yeah. You need to be careful. People that are going through cancer treatment and things like yeah. that. Obviously, you would want their consultant to give their permission that it's safe okay. to treat. And you would just work within the times of the chemo or the radio um, yeah. just to make sure that one for your own safety as well, because obviously you can pick it up by touching that area. Sure. You can pick up whatever's there. And also you don't want to be overloading that person's system no. with anything. Because, and, but it is effective. It does help. You know, they're using it in hospices all the time now. Yeah. You know, so and hospitals. Yeah. Um, and, and obviously if you're having certain drugs because obviously i expect you ask because well i know you do what yeah. medication you're on because certain medication is gonna affect other things isn't it yeah 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 like, do you know, know the biggest chemo. thing that people don't tell you is if they're on antidepressants or um other really? medications like that. it's normally the mental health issues that people don't want to be honest about which is a massive shame isn't it really because if you had a clearer picture of what is going on for somebody 
um, emotionally and physically, that really does help. Mm. So I do ask questions yeah. about mental health as well and any medications because I do feel it's important. You know, I'm not I'm not going to judge anybody. No. It's good to know that if you can you can really do some really good work on relieving stress and anxiety if you know that's what's going on for somebody. Because that a lot of stress and anxiety then produces physical problems. It's not psychosomatic. Yeah, You're not imagining these headache, this tummy ache. And I, I remember a lady I used to go to and she she was incredibly, incredibly anxious and she had lots of tummy problems because of the acid she was building up and she wasn't making it happen on purpose but her anxiety was building up tummy acid and gave her all sorts of trouble with her tummy and it it, it wasn't yeah. psychosomatic it was very very real it, it but it was a byproduct of her anxiety so to, to stop her tummy problems she had to treat her anxiety you know and it, she did get it under control in the end bless her heart but yeah i mean yeah. we all know about ibs don't we but oh you know, yes do we know but you can get stress related gastritis which yeah. will really wreck you so oh, and gosh. that is through stress yeah stress yeah. stress is a and we don't like to admit that we're stressed no no we don't like to um you know as much as i love my job as soon as i left my tummy was so much better which is actually when I started noticing what my tummy was doing, which was the start of my journey with my tummy and the last year, because I was able to actually see. So I'm really glad I left because I might not have noticed it so much. Yeah, yeah. It's really interesting. So we all get a blinker to it, don't we? We just yeah, push ourselves, you do. push ourselves, yeah. push ourselves. We don't even know. think about the implications. We don't think about what is this what's making me stressed no, what is it because you're in it and you do you know and I loved absolutely loved my job but it did get incredibly stressful at times you know not yeah. necessarily the people and I'm I'm so glad I didn't have to do last year with all the all the changes last year would oh have been. god could you imagine awful no no awful. thank you <laughs> um so if people wanted to get hold of you Sarah how could they get hold of you I know you said your web page is up and um your website's you're revamping at the moment so I think that's down isn't it I think, you, yeah, it's down at the moment, but you can still get hold of me on my um, Facebook page, Relax, Rejuvenate, Repair. Relax, Rejuvenate, Repair. Yeah, even though it says I'm not working, in. somebody, it probably says I've, I haven't been on there for a while, to be honest, I've been so busy with the move. But <laughs> last time I put a post on there just saying I'm not working at the moment due to COVID. Um, but if people wanted to message, message me through there, they can still. So that's or Relax, just, Rejuvenate and Repair. Yeah um or just type in sarah yeah sarah fitzgerald sarah jane fitzgerald i think yeah come up and if they've got a question for you or something if they've got I've, any questions every, every time i try and get all the comments up um uh and there are some but it's um i'm, I'm conscious of my my camera coming on all of a sudden it didn't do it last yeah, time it, it, yes it? so but I yeah think it's so, important just to say um if you're interested in reflexology and think that it might be able to help you chances are it probably will mm -hmm. um but it's always worth going to somebody who's with a reg registered organization so and my biggest recommendation would be the association of reflexologists they have are, they got a register a sort of a, a list a register, of people so you can go people. on there and you can search people in your area oh, okay, and that's interesting. Um, that's you helpful. just have that uh comfort in the knowledge that they those people on there are fully qualified Massively insured qualified, a lot of them yeah insured and they have to work within you know um code of conduct and what have you so and they're having their um they're doing continual professional development continuously throughout yeah. the year and have Fit to, to prove practice. that as well yeah so, yeah yeah well that's good to know yeah Oh, well, yeah, thank you, Sarah. Good. That's so lovely to talk to you. Thank you for all your wisdom on reflexology. I'm, I'm absolutely gutted you're in the Isle of Wight. I think that means now I have to um, come to the Isle of Wight and, <laughs> and <laughs> yes, have a treatment. Well, you've already earmarked that one already, haven't you? <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. As soon as we can travel, I'm coming to the Isle of Wight. I think I'm bringing the girls with me and we're going to have a part. We're going to have our own festival. I think that's the plan. <laughs> that would be some riot, wouldn't it? Me and Janina be camping in the garden. You can imagine. Lovely. Can't you? <laughs> You've got a nice little spot for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well not under a tree <laughs> right so thank you so much so uh was it repair rejuvenate and relax rejuvenate repair or i think it 
I think it's still down as that. It's been a year, Claire. It's been a long time. <laughs> it's been a long time. But Sarah is your expert, believe me. So thank you for joining us. Next week, I have got my friend Jacqueline back and she is talking about agricultural customs in the pagan Wheel of the Year as we're coming up to sort of pre-Beltane and... Um, sort of some of the saints because she builds she blends Christianity as well as paganism as well she's got a really interesting stance and there are some like not necessarily plowing customs but some agricultural customs that are rooted deep in history so that's what she's going to be talking about next week with a goddessy pagan weird and wonderful slant um so yeah so thank you very much for joining us thank Sarah you. thank you it's been a pleasure thank oh, you it's always a pleasure to talk to you so I'll see you all <laughs> next week <laughs> right. thank take you. care bye, bye. bye.